Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. What mother of Charlottesville victim told to Trump today has journalists freaking. Susan Bro is the mother of the Charlottesville victim named, Heather Hare. She just issued a statement on Monday thanking President Trump for speaking out against all the violence and hatred from the other day. My condolences, also, to the grieving families of the two state troopers and quick recovering for those injured, her mother added. White supremacist groups ascended on Charlottesville and clashed with violent leftist protesters at the Unite the Right rally protesting the removal of a Robert E. Lee statue. Trump responded perfectly. He rebuked all the violence there. Heather Hare was ran over by a man with ties to white supremacist groups. He injured many others. Here is Trump's amazing response to the violence. Heather's mother was right to be proud. During the statement, Trump made clear that racism is evil and then called all the KKK, neo-Nazis and white supremacists hate groups and repugnant. They are. Share this if you are proud of our president and are praying for all the victims involved from the all-Democrat rally that happened in Charlottesville. God bless this country. We are going to keep fighting against the hate-filled left. Minutes after reporter calls him racist, Trump turns around and does the incredible. President Trump and CNN's resident Dick argued with Trump and tried to insinuate that Trump hadn't condemned white supremacist hate groups enough. Then Trump responded with something incredible. Then Trump responded with something incredible. They've been condemned. They have been condemned, Trump responded. Acosta then asked why Trump isn't holding a press conference even though he had just held a press conference this morning. Trump then cut right to the chase and said he just had a press conference. Acosta then asked if he could ask more questions. Here is how Trump responded. It doesn't bother me at all, but you know, I like real news, not fake news. You're fake news. Trump then left the room. Acosta sure got the message, shut the hell up. As the president was walking out, I responded that he has spread plenty of fake news himself, Acosta tweeted right after. The president said we just had a press conference. We did not. That's fake news. Acosta has attacked the president too much. Share this if you think that the press has lost all your respect and. Let's black out media with this post. Let's show them how many of us really hate their lopsided coverage. The Trump drain has only gotten stronger. Get this out there. Rosie tells Paul Ryan to go straight to hell, she gets response from Twitter HQ she wasn't expecting. Before Christmas, Speaker Paul Ryan sent out a message. At the end of each year, no matter how short, or long, it may feel, there is always Christmas. Waiting for us is that sense of wonder the shepherds felt when the angels appeared in the night sky to herald the birth of a savior, writes Ryan. However liberals immediately attacked Ryan for his innocent, kind message. Jesus was a brown-skinned Middle Eastern undocumented immigrant. He condemned the greedy and commanded us to serve the needy without condition. He was murdered by conspiracists who preach the rule of a police state over compassionate humanity. Noodle that on hashtag Christmas Eve, claimed Shannon Watts. Rosie O'Donnell shared this tweet and put out a message of her own. Paul Ryan, don't talk about Jesus after what you just did to our nation, you will go straight to hell you screwed up fake culture boy hashtag Jude as much she wrote. Wow. This comes immediately after Twitter forced O'Donnell to remove some of her tweets for being targeted harassment. On the same day O'Donnell got the following message from Twitter. We have determined that this account violated the Twitter rules specifically for 1. Violating our rules against abusive behavior. You may not engage in the targeted harassment of someone, or incite other people to do so. We consider abuse of behavior an attempt to harass intimidate or silence someone else's voice, 
writes Twitter to Rosie O'Donnell. New York Times admits it spread a huge lie about Trump's Jerusalem decision. If Obama had made the same Jerusalem declaration that President Trump did, liberals would be applauding him. In fact, both Obama and Bush promised to do what Trump did, but they didn't follow through. As soon as Trump made the decision, liberals and the mainstream media suddenly started condemning it. The New York Times spread the message that Trump's Jerusalem decision led to mass violence from Muslims who were angry. Now they are admitting that that is a total lie. With residents neither basking in seasonal cheer nor raging in the throes of a new intifada, the popular mood in the city was more one of hopeless resignation, the article reads. Yet, despite the dire predictions of major turmoil, and the best efforts of both Fatah and Hamas to mobilize the masses, so far there has been no large-scale, spontaneous outbursts of violence in the wake of the president's declaration, they admit. It's not that people don't want to stand up for their rights, said Samar Salah, 25, a Muslim student from a nearby village who had come to Bethlehem with her friends to see the Christmas decorations. But there are never any results, writes the New York Times. Many Palestinians now view the confrontations with Israeli soldiers as pointless since they consider the Jerusalem Declaration unlikely to be reversed, they write. Do you think President Trump made the right decision? And culture infuriates liberals with bold statement about deporting dreamers, is she right? Liberals are constantly trying to defend dreamers, and claim that anyone against them is some kind of Hitler or Nazi monster. However, conservative firebrand Ann Coulter explained why dreamers are actually the first people we should deport in a very controversial interview. It has to be said that many of the legal and illegal low wage workers, they're incredibly hard workers, they're really nice people, and it occurred to me that I actually like all of the illegal immigrants except the dreamers said Coulter. They're the ones I want deported first because they're the activists. They're the obnoxious ones. They're the ones who go to congressional offices and stamp their feet and say, how dare you not rush to grant us amnesty? Whereas the other illegals don't have the time to be protesting, they're busy working, being polite, being so friendly and nice and saying, Merry Christmas, explained Coulter. No. Let's start by deporting the dreamers. That's point one, said Coulter. Unless, dreamers, are not deported, they're all becoming citizens, she said. By and large, the third world immigration advocates, they know their best bet is, don't let anybody talk about it, don't let anybody think about it, we don't want people opening the newspaper and saying, HMM, where's the article on immigration? We just don't want it even entering their minds, that's their approach, said Coulter. Do you think she's right? Trump Jr. breaks silence to say the one thing his father never could on Charlottesville. The mainstream media took all weekend to try and label Trump as a Nazi sympathizer and Trump supporter. They attacked him for not properly naming and condemning the white nationalist groups that rallied on Saturday. It doesn't matter what Trump does. The left will always attack him. They have nothing but pure hatred for him. Donald Trump has not been tweeting much lately since the media attacked him. In his first tweet, he first responded to Scott Adams, the Dilbert comic creator, who tweeted the following. Was it heartfelt enough? Phase along with why did he not mention Group X, Y, Z? See the problem yet? Donald Trump Jr. is right. The media is sick. They have rules for the people that pay them and rules for the people they hate. It's all fake. The critics will never be satisfied because they just simply hate our president so much. They hate him because he beat every single one of them. Governor Mike Huckabee agrees. He slammed the media bias as well. At POTUS couldn't be more explicit in condemning racist thugs. Will critics be satisfied? Of course not. They can't see past their hate. The media is breeding more Trump voters with this bullcrap. 
they have run out ideas and are now attacking Trump with the old tired racist card. Share this everywhere to expose the media and get Trump and Trump supporting people elected in the upcoming elections. We are not done making America great again and it's going to take all of us. Crisis averted Trump just got North Korea to do exactly what he wanted them to. President Donald Trump has been attacked by basically everyone in the media for his handling North Korea. He did not let that stop him and now it is paying off big league. Less than a week ago North Korea was declaring their intention to nuclear strike Guam in defiance to the U.S. Trump threatened to obliterate them and, despite the left seemingly siding with Kim Jong-un, last night the impossible happened. North Korea has declared they are backing off threats to Guam. Kim's official statement from his state media was, If the Yankees persist in their extremely dangerous reckless actions on the Korean peninsula and in its vicinity, testing the restraint of the DPRK, North Korea, the, North, will make an important decision as it already declared. This was the result of hard negotiations by Trump for the last few weeks, including launching an exploratory committee to decide on whether or not to pursue criminal investigations into China's IP theft. This led to China earlier today ending their primary trade of coal and fish with North Korea. However, despite this amazing accomplishment of seemingly single-handedly averting a nuclear crisis, the media will certainly give Trump only criticism for his choices. The results speak for themselves. That's why, folks. We need all y'all to get the true story of North Korea and Trump shared everywhere. Remember, the American people don't need the media, the media need the American people.